YTBC what's the deal let me give a quick shout out to my man YTBC West Africa I was on his uh, his last video um, I'm gonna leave that video in the description box and in the video is a two-part video he was talking about uh, I believe the most popular fighters uh, out here today and then a topic that caught my attention obviously was the heavyweights and in that he was saying should there be like a two-tier heavyweight division like a heavyweight and then a super heavyweight division kind of like what they do in the uh, amateurs and yes this topic has been brought up uh, quite a few times I remember I was almost in agreement that you know between 200 and 235 pounds should be heavyweights and then you know in, in anything 235 plus should be super heavyweight you know so you know pretty much 236 and up but you know then I go back and like right now I'm in the middle of doing my 70s uh, heavyweights the top 10 heavyweights of the 70s and the 20 guys that I came up with in the 70s uh, the 20 you know top 20 guys the average weight was 211 pounds when I go to the 80s and I did my top 20 there the average weight was 220 pounds in the 90s the average weight of the top 20 guys were 234 pounds average weight for the heavyweights from 2000 to 2009 234 pounds you know so you look at today's landscape um you know you got guys like tyson fury klitschko helenius joshua pulev ustinov jarek jai thompson shit brown to calm all these guys man that they all weigh 250 plus some guys 260 280 ustinov is a big motherfucker <laughs> he is a big huge dude you know then you got the guys who come in a little less than 230 david hay he's making a comeback brian jennings pavekin mansoor chagayev even marco huck came up to the division and try to give it a shot what i'll say is this um a lot of these smaller heavyweights they do have trouble against the big heavyweights but we shouldn't be you know prisoners of the moment just like all the big guys are you know uh dominating a division so let's split the division I really wouldn't say that because if you go back and look at past decades, man, there was always a great fighter in that decade that held his own. This decade, we just haven't seen one yet. You know, we thought it would be Brian Jennings. Um, we thought it would be David Hay a few years ago, but it just it didn't turn out like that. You know, in the 2000s, you had Chris Bird. Chris Bird was 11 4 and 1 in the, between 2000 and 2009. He fought, you know, Galata, Pavekin, Holyfield, McCline, you know, Vitaly, Vlad. In the 90s, you had guys like Michael Moore and Holyfield. And I mentioned that, uh, or let me mention that YTBC Africa, along with many other fans, didn't think that uh, Holyfield was natural during the 90s, you know, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is that you had small guys that were able to have success in the division in the 90s. In the 80s, the average weight was 220. A lot of people like to say Tyson was a small heavyweight. He was average weight, 220. You know, sometimes he'll fight at 218, 217. You go to the 70s, guys like Frazier, Quarry, Shavers, those guys were 205. You know, Shavers going to fight with Roy Williams and uh, Lyle, and he would go into those fights, and he would be outweighed. You know, I believe the the only, you know, what he had the fights with Holmes, and I believe one fight they weighed the same, and another fight he was a pound heavier. I know all up until 1995, and Shavers' last fight, he weighed in, what, 211? So he's always been a considerably small guy, but he had crazy power punching. The guys in the 70s, the, the smaller guys in the 70s, they brought something great to the table. Corey with his heart determination, he was able to steamroll a guy like Shavers with Shavers uh, power punching, you know, able to go in, against, go in there against guys like Ron Lau, who got crazy power punching and outweighed him. Frazier was able to mold, mold bigger guys down, although he did have trouble with Big George Foreman, but... He was able to beat bigger guys. It's just that in today's era, we don't have a Frazier, Corey, Shavers, Tyson, uh, Holyfield, more as far as, you know, guys that weigh that weight. I'm not talking about their height, but just like YTBC, YTBC West Africa was saying, just the weights. We don't have a small guy like that that's holding his own. And I think that uh, we're just going to have to sit and wait for him. But I don't think we should divide the division because the smaller guys are having a hard time. Nobody's been able to break away. I think Pavekin on this second go around will probably have the best chance out of all the smaller guys, in my opinion. I want to see what David Hay does against Mark Demore, but um, we just got to wait, man. You know what I'm saying? I think we just need to wait, and I think one of these smaller guys will break through 
and become something worth watching. Uh, Mansoor, you know, we're going to see what he does with Dominic Brazil, but in the fight with Gerald Washington, you can see the struggle between big man and little man. But shit, Washington was the one going on his back foot, you know, stand away from the action, not wanting to mix it up. Now, Washington isn't on the level of a Fury and a Klitschko and a Joshua or a Pulev, but at the same time, he is a big guy. Uh, and Mansoor pressed that fight. Uh, shit. What's the dude's name? Um, Cunningham, right? Steve Cunningham. He dropped Fury with a good right hand. So the small guys just need to hang in there. Somebody a breakthrough, man. I, I'm thinking it's Pavekin, although he, he he is getting up there in age. But like I said, you go to Box Rex, top 20. Ten of the guys are 34 years older, you know. Um, so I think one of these small guys will break through, man. I'm putting my money on Pavekin, and we'll see what Hay does, you know. Uh, Mansoor, you know, he's he's definitely getting up there in age, but we just got to wait until one of these, you know, guys, smaller guys just come and break through, man, and just have a breakthrough fight, breakthrough performance. But, yes, it can get, you know, looking at guys like Ortiz and, you know, all these big guys I named, it's hard seeing these smaller guys beating them. But you match these guys the right way, and Ortiz right now might be the best heavyweight out there. I mean, I, I know you're as good as your last fight, but the way he handled Jennings, it, like I said in my prediction video, if you look at these guys' skill level, it's almost uh, a mismatch. And when they went in there, it was a mismatch. But uh, to answer your question, though, man, uh, I, just, I just really think that these smaller guys, we just need a guy to come out of this pool of small guys and be great. You know, let's 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 not uh divide this division because these small guys are struggling. They got to be great. Somebody has to break out of it, you know, and uh, break the trend. We need a Chris Bird, a Holyfield, a Moore. Uh, even though guys consider Tyson small, you know, he was smaller than your Greg Page and uh, Bone Crusher Smith and Tony Tucker and, and Tubbs and Douglas and Coatsia, but he was still 220. He was still at a nice weight. Um. So small guys can't get it done. We just need a great small guy to get it done. A guy that, you know, that can get in there and have some type of power. All those guys I named, like a Tyson and, and Frazier and Shavers, they have power. None of these guys possess that type of power. Maybe a Pavekin. Mansoor seemed like he got it, you know, but he's just the age, though. You know, if, you know, you, you, you figure Father Time's going to catch up sooner or later, but... I just think somebody has to break away and separate themselves and be great. And I think Pavekin has that ability. It seemed like he has the power against these other guys. He did have a disastrous performance with Klitschko. Klitschko should have got some points deducted because he was just using his size, but he was using it just to just purely to hold in that fight. Um, but Ortiz is a different animal, you know. So it's, it's, it's easy to say, well, look what Ortiz did to Jennings. We should separate the weight class. I mean, Ortiz... He has the skill to go along with it, you know. Um, and I know you brought that up in your video. You're not talking about skill, but just simply size and mass. But I think one of these little guys will get it done, and then we'll get back to it. will be an even playing field once these smaller dudes start to get victories over these big guys. But keep the division how it is, man. You know, shit. David Hay had to fight Nikol Nikolai Valuev years ago. You remember that big motherfucker? He was seven feet tall, 300 some pounds. So. It'll pan out. It'll work itself out, man. Just we need one of these small dudes to break through and give us something great. Chagaev, somebody. Chagaev's about to fight Lucas Brown, so maybe go in there and whoop Lucas Brown's ass and we'll have a diff different outlook on this. Just my opinion, heavyweight topic, so you know I'm all over it. YTBC, I'm out.